Great. So, recording started. Uh, welcome everyone to the um, community stand-up eighth edition, I think. Um, today, uh, just a couple of updates from our side. So, let's get started already. Um, we are currently working on the 0.12.4. Just uh, last uh, weekend, we released the 0.12.3. This uh, contains quite a, a few updates. Uh, most importantly, you can now set the bundler via the CLI. If you have multiple bundlers installed, then there's a dash dash bundler option. So this is not really, let's say, that useful in, in, the, in the standard use case, but there could be a scenario where you want to test out different bundlers and uh, yeah. beforehand you had always to uninstall, um, well, the not wanted ones, uh, and now you can just uh, have multiple ones and actually select or switch on the command line. The other thing is that we improved the uh, pilot update uh, checks and uh, some, some validations in, in the um, Pyrocell I for, for pilot. Um, the uh, pilot validate um, command there had uh, an issue on the stay small and we, we fixed that. Uh, we updated also the uh, typing declaration generator, uh, the debts package um, or DTS that was uh, fixed. And we have uh, updated Pyroblazer a bit, um, still missing the, the dot net um, counterpart but you'll see that in a second uh, how it will look like um, minus of course some further enhancements that we'll do uh, there are a few other uh, improvements and, and changes to the cli uh, that i want to to demo in the beginning so uh, let's have a look uh, here i just have a standard 0123 based uh, app shell and I think I already started this one. Uh, you see, we got new icons uh, that now look a little bit cooler than beforehand. Um, and uh, the nice thing now is the, that you cannot only, let's say, run it as I do now. Uh, you can, of course, uh, build it too. So let's say we just build it. And uh, you can also now publish it directly via the command line, um, which is something that you could only do for pilots beforehand. So let's give it another second. Great, okay, now let's run publish. Let's first see the command line options here. Um, the critical thing is here that you can have different providers. By default, it uses the none provider. There's also inbuilt an X copy provider. These are very simple. Um, you can have other providers too. So we were thinking about adding some CLI plugins, with, for, for instance, an Azure Blob Storage um, provider, or of course, there will be an FTP provider and so on and so forth. So we will support, uh, let's say, all yeah, more or less uh, popular um platforms for static um yeah static sites right so and and then we have the type argument which you should know already from the build command so if you don't specify anything it is all uh, otherwise it will uh well either do uh, only the release or only the emulator the emulator will be by the way published always via npm and so if I would now try to, to publish this, uh, yeah, it would <laughs> certainly do that. Um, the name here is, is uh, just uh, pile two, so maybe let's not uh, pollute the NPM registry with it. But what we could do is that we actually switch the type, say I only want to publish my release, and you could uh, now set it to the provider. Otherwise, nothing would be done because the standard is, of course, uh, none. Now, here we also have a fields um, argument, and the Xcopy provider requires actually to be uh, to find a fields target argument. So let's just do that. Um, fields target is, yeah, where we want to place it. So we could just say, let's place it in, in my dist. Actually, should be maybe somewhere else. Could be a shared drive or whatever. Um, you define where the, that should be. And uh, now you have all your sources in my dist. 
Let me just copy that over. And that's what the published provider will do in the end, uh, no matter what you what you give it. So even for FTP, it would just copy it over. Now, of course, using the FTP protocol. Right. So that's um, our update on the on the Pyro CLI. Uh, again, a few other uh, bug fixes, improvements. Uh, I think overall is is uh, quite a nice release uh, regarding the uh, CLI. Cool. If there are no questions for this, I would move on for uh, showing um, what we did for Pile Blazer. No question, then let me move on. Right. So let's have a look. This is our repository for um, the Pile Blazer uh, core, uh, .NET Core counterpart. Um, so for Pile Blazer, you always need two parts. You need, of course, to have the Pile Blazer um, plugin in your app shell. But then when you build your app shell, actually what you will download and get is the uh, new NuGet package, um, which contains then the shared uh, resources from, from, from Blazor actually, for, so from .NET uh, Core um, build artifacts. And what these are, are essentially just your web assembly file and some shared DLLs. Um, and you also get a JavaScript runtime. Now, previously, you always had to select um, this kind of shared package uh, online, but what we can do, and that's what in this example is, is outlined, you can also use local ones, uh, which uh, make a lot of sense, especially now when we develop this. So what we can do here is that we just set some environment variables like the PileBlazer local uh, nupcake, and uh, we just, uh, yeah, bring it down to the package nupcake here in the um, working directory. And that way, uh, actually what PyBlazer will do at compile time, it will not download uh, a package um, from NuGet, but it will actually use this local one. And here in this special setup, the local one is actually um, created via a build um, that we trigger. Right, so, Again, at, at compile time of our app shell, all these resources are coming together. And so what we end up with is an app shell that can lazy load uh, shared Blazor dependencies and has all the logic actually to handle um, Pile Blazor, uh, so Blazor components used in pilots. Right, so that brings me to now writing a pilot. Um, so here we have some Blazor code. Uh, this is very, let's say, dump blazer code but just to give you the idea we can have uh, let's say further collections for dependency injection and so on um, but what we improved in Pile blazer is that you now can have real links so our counter menu has just a real uh, anchor uh, element as you would write it in standard blazer if you remember our first proof of concept we used a special component called anchor here uh, that special component is no longer necessary. You can just now use yeah whatever you have written already in standard Blazor code. So for instance, an ahref, we actually handle that gracefully. It's not a full page reload. We identify that this is actually part of the single page and it just works. Um, let's see. Um, that will, I guess, take a moment because we also here uh, on the fly um, actually build the Blazor component. So let's give it a minute. And in the meantime, if you have any question, then feel free to interrupt. Otherwise, I'll continue talking. Okay. Yeah, it says running, but it is not running. We need to wait until we get the the output that we are after. But in the meantime, what I can talk. Oh, okay. I think we are good. Okay. Yeah. Maybe. 
Let's see. Let's see if that is all successful uh, and it seems to be loaded. So what we see here is counter and this is a single page application, right? So there is uh, no new page load. That's all the same page. And that's my Blazor component that works here, right? Um, so now I have, a, let's say, a link that really is represented as a link uh, originally and uh, yeah just behaves like that. So it, it uses the router from Pyrel uh, and not the router that uh, is usually used from, from Blazor. And it does that just seamlessly. Right, other than that, of course, we are currently working on, on tooling enhancements in this area. So one of the things is that the reference code chain that we always include, um, now let's turn on a little bit of syntax highlighting. Let's, have a little bit of light here, uh, actually is able now to detect all the unique assemblies and actually performs quite some checks. So that the code here, uh, yeah, quite, uh, let's say, um, uh, expanded. Uh, we are still thinking if this should be part, let's say, of uh, yeah, a standard repository or if you put that in actually in a module and you have it just in your package JSON uh, defined as a Dev dependency or something like that. Uh, so not not fully sure yet um, how that looks like. So this is all at the moment fleshed out. But yeah, so that's how Pirate Blazor is going to work. And uh, I think all in all, this will be a, a great step forward, uh, especially in terms of productivity, because uh, as you can already see, also the project structure uh, now manifests a little bit uh, more. And uh, I think we can move on and have an MVP release of this soon. Um, what we will do as a side note is that we will align the versions of PyBlazor with Blazor. So everything that is, let's say, um, working with the, the 3.2 uh, release series, so 3.2.1 uh, will be also version 3.2.1 from, from our side, right? So 3.2.1.0 actually. And if we have, let's say, patches on this, it will be 3.2.1.0. One, for instance, and so on, um, and uh, that that should work fine, uh, especially when when the five zero release uh, comes out, then uh, the version that that we release that uh, requires Blazor five zero uh, will be also five zero on our side, uh, and we will always align, which makes it quite simple if you want to let's say establish your app shell uh, and have it uh, jointly done. Right, so this is uh, what I have to say about uh, Pile Blazer. And um, are there any questions regarding Pile Blazer? Otherwise, uh, we would do a little bit of a, a demo from, from our colleague Jens on uh, our VS Code extension uh, enhancements that we will roll out this week. Cool, okay, then I would say uh, Jens. Are you with us? Yes. Hi, Florian. So I will try to start my screen share. And as I learned from our last meeting, I should choose the smaller desktop. <laughs> that and everyone can see it. Can you see my split screen here on the left side? The I can't see anything yet. Attention. Okay. No, not yet. Um, Recording is started. Well, your, your presentation ended. Someone else has started sharing. <laughs> cool. Um, again. Ah, oh, now now I have the the red rectangle. Oh, sorry, I just will take. So <clears throat> now you can see. It? Yeah. Great. So on the left side, I have the already open VS Code extension. On the right side, for demonstration purpose, the um, web browser. So what we did with the change uh, in the last week is that we enhanced um, our VS Code extension um, regarding some helpful information, especially for for Pyro projects. So I'm currently in the in our own in the Smartyard web portal. That's a, a Pyro project, and when I go to the extension uh, on the first view, you don't see changes, but when you hover um, over the buttons, for example, Pyro, you will find some um, helpful links. For example, and then um, put the attention to the to the right. Um, 
from there you can get directly to the let's say a paradox on the one side um, on the other side um, it is very helpful to see okay how the plugins have been um, used there so but there we have uh, two different things the one thing is the link um, which is pointing directly to the readme file from the um, extension here when you just click it here you get it immediately because it's well it's on the on my machine it's um, basically the markup from the uh, from the page that we see in a couple of seconds also on the website but this is um, the documentation of the version 0.11.8 and if you want to get some information let's say about the current version maybe there were some updates already and you can get uh, go automatically or can click the, the button and then you get to the documentation page on docs yeah, that's pretty much it. Very okay. cool. Um, any any plans to, to expand that further or to, to bring in the the top maybe even inside VS Code or um... this is one idea mm -hmm. that we can look for. Um, the only thing here is a little bit. Um, um, let's say the the out of the box solution <laughs> when you call it from VS Code, it points you directly to the browser. So, mm -hmm. um, so you have to uh, create a, um, a a web view there. Um, but this means that you really behave like a like a local browser. You know, we we must let's say fetch the website as a HTML uh, HTML or JavaScript structure and render it then uh, inside VS Code extension. This could be um, one of the next steps. And um, if I remember correctly, there is another mm -hmm. uh, topic opened by you, Florian, which uh, goes more into the debugging direction of the VS Code extension. Um, but to be honest, I'm not. I don't have it on the on the page at the moment. What, mm -hmm. what we should take next? Yeah. Yeah, that's a good good uh, uh, remark there. Yeah, um, the debug uh, provider would be certainly a, a good thing to have, uh, especially if we wire it up maybe with these available commands. Uh, they they could, or at least some of them, are already show up then in the mm -hmm. debug pane as as tasks um, that you could also reuse, and uh, I think would maybe be good. Um, especially because that that wires up uh, if you click, for instance, on debug pile instance, wires up sets uh, VS Code already into debug mode, uh, and you could place um, everywhere breakpoints if you want yep. to inspect the current uh, running instance uh, more closely. And I think that that would be good. Um, mm -hmm. We will see um, what we can integrate there. Uh, we'll certainly have something up and running for the next version. Oh, but I think that that looks cool. Um, very good additions, and I think quite useful. Okay, thanks. All right, cool. Good. Then um, feed service. So we we have two things here. So the first is uh, let me just briefly show my screen. Um, a couple of weeks, I think we talked about that uh, offer in the feed service is uh, another kind of distribution method. Um, so we have our standard, let's say, API shape, um, uh, which doesn't doesn't look so beautiful, uh, of course, um, if we just look at it um, yeah, in plain text. But here it looks a little bit, let's say, more ex exploratory uh, friendly and uh, what we get is an answer that uh, was pretty much defined by the uh, specification in Pyrel. Uh, so you can go to docs Pyrel IO uh, reference and, and see the specs there. Um, and you get um, a response that contains items and uh, all the items are essentially all your pilots or your micro front end, so to speak. But what you can also do is uh, you can use uh, a predefined way, and that's the import map. Uh, we have this in our feed service too. 
And uh, that gives you a response. It has an object with uh, a key called imports. And now it's a key value map or a hash set um, that just maps uh, the names of your microfrontends to the entry, uh, entry uh, bundle or the, the main bundle. And uh, yeah, that could be used then, for instance, uh, if you publish your pilots as valid ESMs um, together with uh, either the web standard, because that's a web standard, or with system.js that supports this too. Um, and that's a very nice way. Uh, and using this, you can actually utilize other technologies already. So you could use, for instance, uh, the pilot cloud feed service for um, serving um, your single spa micro front ends and dynamically, right? Because that's one of the of the drawbacks. If you have a root config or I don't know, um, then uh, you always are stuck with whatever you define there. There is pretty much no dynamics here involved. But uh, using uh, our rule engine and uh, therefore our feed service, you can leverage all these nice techniques to get new user experience out there and uh, actually leverage micro frontends how they, in our opinion at least, should be leveraged. And I think that's therefore a nice way. And uh, as said, it's not limited to, to Pyro, but you can also use it in Pyro and you can use it uh, for other things too. And that's quite nice. Right, so that's the one thing uh, we could demo more here, but uh, what I uh, think would be good is uh, if uh, Finn shows us now what you can do with the, the Pyrel Docker image, because this thing allows you to actually configure um, other uh, kind of providers too, uh, even using um, something like, for instance, MongoDB as a, as a uh, baking database for storing all the meta information. Are you with us, Finn? Uh, yes. So. so I start sharing. Cool. Um, screen two. So uh, I will take the chance and give you a quick demo of how you can host your own uh, pilot cloud uh, feed. Uh, in this demo, we're going to use MongoDB as database. So this is the place where your uh, feeds and on your API keys are stored. For example, your pilots uh, itself will be stored on a file storage, where in this demo we're going to use Amazon S3. Um, so let's jump right in. Uh, Can you make it this. a little bit larger from the font size or uh, use uh, the, the Windows yeah. <laughs> uh, um, uh, Zoom? Just uh, via Windows Plus, you can also do that. You know the shortcuts. Uh, Windows Plus, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Why is it only knowing these two values? Wait, uh, I gotta do it a different way. Oh, I just increase the font. Is that correct? So you can yeah, see. Yeah, looks better. Should be enough. Uh, so um, let's see the setup. I currently have one dark container running which is uh, our MongoDB instance. This is the place where we, want to, uh, where we want to store all the feeds, for example, and as I said, also the API keys. And um, as you can see, I already have it running and there's no database inside right now because I've uh, booted up freshly, except the, um, the system databases. Uh, the requirements, however, are that you have access to the to the Docker image. Um, I have it on my machine already. Uh, it's called uh, Pilot Cloud, and I would say we directly spin that one up. Um, we're going to do it with this command, which is uh, really important: is that you have to specify some environment variables that are required. Um, I personally preferred doing it in an environment file because there are quite some environment variables we need for the setup. Uh, an environment variable uh, file looks like this. If you're not quite familiar with Docker environment files, uh, can you see it? I will try to make it larger as well. Mm. Or just open the file in, in uh, VS Code. Yeah. Should be fine, right? 
<laughs> okay, so these are the environment files, uh, environment values. So some of them are mandatory. This one, for example, the parallel public uh, URL. And uh, as you can see, I specified this authentication mechanism, uh, basic authentication with uh, admin and password. This is uh, our MongoDB connection string. I'm running it on my local host, which is uh, why the connection string using this one host doc internal. For those who don't know, uh, that's a special host you have to specify if you want to communicate from one Docker is uh, contained to another one. And as fast storage provider, we're going to use AWS, this, uh, which is why we have these environment variables right here. So access ID, access key. Uh, don't worry, I'm going to delete this after the demo. And also the region, which is EU central one. So let's spin this one up. And now let's first check if it's running correctly. Um, I can do that by calling, for example, the, the, the Swagger UI. Mm. API docs. There it is. So there we have access to the Swagger one locally on our machine. Uh, the next thing we want to do is that we want to try or we want to create a feed. Let's do that. Um, we're going to use this by doing uh, by yeah creating a post to this URL API slash v one slash feed and well we're going to call it let's say fin feed because that's the name and give it some description so when I'm going to send it now. I don't know if I specified authorization yet. Send it. No, unauthorized. Uh, it's good, actually. Now try it with basic, basic auth. And then we get a 200. Succeeded. Let's check if it's uh, located in our MongoDB as well. And there it is. Our database is called PyroFeed. That's the default name. There are collections, and when I now inspect the feeds, you should see our document, which is called FinFeed. There it is. So uh, this was the quick demo of how to uh, connect to MongoDB. Now in the second step, we also uh, want to see how we can publish pilots and if they start in Amazon S3. Uh, I have it open right here. So I created a bucket already called Pyro Feed Pro. And as you can see, it's empty uh, yet. This should change. So as requirement, if you, wanted, uh, if you want to publish a pilot, we need an API key for sure, which is why we create this first. Um, so we gonna, how do we call it? Fin Feed. This is the URL we're gonna use. Give it a name. Uh, and test key, some description, and post it. This is our API, uh, our API key. We can now or could now publish it to the uh, to a team which is developing a pilot, for example. Uh, let's grab it by copy and paste, and try to publish it or try to publish a pilot. I have a pilot uh, open right now. Uh, it's been quite a while since I touched that, but it should serve its uh, purpose. So um, two things we have to specify are the, uh, as the endpoint, uh, which I call fin feed, and as API key, we use the one we just created. Now let's run it. And it's already published. Now it's the last step. Just check if it's uh, in the Amazon S3. Fresh it, and there it is. So there's our um, yeah collection. I don't. I'm not quite sure what's the correct term for Amazon S3 or folder. Okay, bucket. folder. 
Oh, uh, bucket. No, no, I think bucket is uh, mm. called it's part of the pirate. Yeah, I think so. that's a, that's just a folder there. Yeah. yeah, and that's a folder. Yeah. Mm. And ten feet, and there's our pilot we mm. just created with all the parts inside. So that was demo for to uh, spin that stock container up real quick. How you connect uh, to these two providers? It's actually very simple. You just have to specify the environment uh, variables correctly, and you should be fine. Cool. Thanks. All right. Since we are already reaching also the, the 30 minute mark, I would say if there are no more questions. Thanks everyone for presenting and uh, have a great uh, evening now. And uh, here maybe next week or in two weeks, depending <laughs> how we schedule it. All awesome. Right. Thanks. Have a great evening. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.